Yeah, good morning everybody. Thank you, sir. Uh, bone graft substitute is my topic for the day. Whether you like it or not, bone grafting is one of the most commonest procedure being done by orthopedic surgeon. Whether you are in trauma, spine, hand, foot and ankle, arthroplasty, you need to have bone grafts. Let us look at uh, this scenario. This patient has come with uh, uh, fall, with pain in the knee, taken an x-ray, you see something there, it's not really clear. You get a CT scan, you see a depression there and now we got to elevate it and you temporarily fix it but you have a big void there. What do you do there? Traditionally it has been filled with bone grafts from the iliac crust with an additional surgery on top having its own problems but now we have a bone graft substitute which can be filled up, which can be used to fill up along with the plate and uh, which helps in uh, early mobilization and uh, better outcome. Well, how does bone graft work? Well, it basically has three roles. One is a structural support as in tibial plateau fractures. It prevents collapse. It, it is, uh, helps as a void filler uh, to prevent uh, fractures, especially in cysts in the metaphyseal region. Where the structure is good, you have to fill it up. We can use uh, bone grafts or bone graft substitutes for that. It also improves healing of the fracture and non-unions. You need to know these three terminologies, osteoconduction, osteointection and osteogenesis. Osteoconduction means it provides matrix for bone growth. The bone will not, you know, if there is a space you can put bone graft or bone graft substitutes in between which will act as a scaffold through which the bone can grow. And this is, most of the bone graft substitutes acts as an osteoconduction. It has the property of osteoconduction. Some of them do have osteointection. What do you mean by osteointection? It is by the growth factors which will encourage the mesenchymal cells to differentiate into osteoblastic cells and thereby encouraging bone healing. And osteogenesis is direct bone production by the osteoblast and the periosteal cells when you do autogenous bone grafting. So what are the types of bone grafts you have? You have autographs taken from the same patient, allograft usually from the cadaver but it has the problem of uh, immunogenicity and disease transmission and we have bone graft substitutes and osteoinductive agents like BMP which will be dealt in the next talk. Autogenic bone graft is the gold standard by which other materials are judged because it has all the three properties of osteoconduction, osteoinduction and osteogenesis. But it has its own drawbacks like limited supply and uh, donor site morbidity like pain and probably uh, hernias and things like that. So what are the potential role of bone graft substitutes. It usually uh, works as an extender. You have bone graft but you know it's not good enough or enough for you to fill up the space. So you can use bone graft substitutes to increase your volume whereby it acts as an extender and as an extender it also helps in enhancing bone healing. Once you fill it up your stability is more so it enhances bone healing and at times as I said in metaphyseal region it can be used as substitute by itself without autogenous bone graft to fill up metaphyseal spaces. I should uh, emphasize that it is used only in metaphyseal spaces by itself and it is not used in diaphysis. So what are the different types of bone graft substitutes you have? You have calcium phosphate, calcium sulphate, collagen based matrices, demineralized bone matrix or DBM, hydroxyapatite, tricalcium phosphate and osteoinductive proteins. And the properties of these uh, different bone graft substitutes vary and you should know about that. One of them is resorption, how fast it resorbs and how uh, it's one of, the, one of the properties we should know. For example, calcium sulfate, it rapidly resolves in six weeks, it goes off. You don't see any more of calcium sulfate. So it should not, it should not be used for in instances where you need to have support for longer time. At the same time, hydroxyapatite, it takes long, very long time and it might stay without getting resorbed. So you have the problem of hydroxyapatite also. So at times you have combination of these products to optimize the rate of resorption and the rate of resorption also depends on the porosity and the geometry of the uh, substitute. Yet another thing is the mechanical property. Uh, it again varies from component to component. Calcium phosphate cement has the highest compressive strength so hence it is the bone, uh, the substitute which is used for supporting the subcontral bone especially in the paste form. And 
it's very important that these uh, bone graft substitutes are designed to be used along with internal fixation. It should not be just just because there is, uh, uh, if you're doing a, a trauma case and you're elevating the articular surface, you should not just put the graft substitute and come out. You should always uh, augment it and support it with internal fixation. This is an example of uh, lateral contralateral fracture done with minimally invasive techniques. You lift it up and you use calcium phosphate cement to fill up and use uh, lag screws to hold the uh, articular surface in position. See, this is what you do with the injectable cements. You can do a retrograde filling. You can fill up the cavity and once it hardens, it gives much <coughs> greater compressive strength whereby you can, it has a theoretical advantage of early weight bearing. What about calcium sulphate? It is an osteoconductive void filler, but very low compressive strength. So it has no structural support. It should not be used for structural support. It resorbs rapidly. And osteoset is one of the trade names which is available. Okay, so it can be used for as a graft extender. It is available in different forms like pellets, beads and injectable. The advantage of beads is that you can prepare your beads and add the antibiotics which is appropriate, especially in uh, infection. If you want to local local delivery of uh, antibiotics, you can use osteo uh, calcium sulfate pellets, add on your antibiotics which is sensitive and deliver it there. Look at this example of tibial fracture, wherein the antibiotic uh, it is uh, antibiotic loaded calcium sulfate. You can see in six weeks it's completely resolved. We don't want any foreign body. But if you use methyl methacrylate with antibiotics, you got to do another surgery to remove it. So if you use calcium sulfate, you don't have to do that. It goes off and it unites in uh, uh, six weeks or sorry three months time. Demineralized bone matrix. What is this? This is nothing but human cadaveric bone, which is smashed down to. Uh, small uh, particles and acid extraction of it is done taking out the minerals and you have collagen, non-collagenous proteins and BMPs along with this. So uh, the, the presence of BMP gives the added advantage, if at all it is there, it gives the added advantage to uh, DB, uh, DBMs to other bo bone graft substitutes. But however, it has to be sterilized because it is from allografts and once you sterilize it, the amount of BMP is reduces. It is again available in different forms like gel, putty or uh, strips and it is usually combined with other cancellous bone and other bone graft substitutes. And this is usually used in trauma cases even in uh, diaphysal regions. As I said, the growth factor activity varies between tissue banks and between batches. So we are not really sure about the activities of BMPs in uh, this type of uh, bone graft substitute. And usually you will end up, uh, this ends up as an osteoconductive agent like any other thing. Hydroxyapatite, it, it, can, it, is, uh, it can be uh, produced from two forms, one from the marine coral exoskeleton or by chemical reaction which is synthetic. Both are available. If you look at the left side, you can see this, on top is the cancellous bone, down is the hydroxyapatite. It looks almost similar. So this is yet another uh, bone graft substitute which is available. But it is available in India, marketed by an Indian company and the trade name is uh, Osteoin. It is synthetic uh, hydroxyapatite. It is again available in different sizes and shapes. shapes, shapes. The pro only problem is very slow resorption. In, in fact, it might not be resorbed. So if you're using and if you're looking at later on replacements, this is a uh, problem that you, you, you will have those residual hydroxyapatite sitting there. What is tricalcium phosphate? Well, this is yet another uh, TCP or beta TCP is yet another uh, form of uh, uh, bone graft substitute. Uh, it's available in different forms. It again has a compressive strength slightly less than cancellous bone and it, it's, it's, the trade name for that is Crown Oils uh, from Synthes and conduit by Depu. This again can be used for as a bone gas substitute in the metaphysial region. This is a case of a distal femur fracture, delayed union. You see a huge gap there. You know when you, if you, if you, you, you need to increase the chance of union, you need to have a combination of uh, autogenous bone graft and allogenic bone graft. The allogenous bone graft is actually impacted into the metaphysial region, giving you much stability there. And it, you can see that as the time goes on, 
the it has gone on to union so it at times and most of the times you use it as a combination rather than by itself so this is here you have the bone graft substitute and you have the uh, tricortical grafts or whatever from the uh, iliac crust and it has gone on to unite so bone graft substitutes as a lot of role from starting from the skull it has been used to uh, close the bar holes to foot and angle so everywhere bone graft substitute has a role you should know the properties of each and use it uh, judiciously the advantage of uh, bone graft substitutes are it's available off the shelf it was avoid the morbidity of autogenous bone grafting like uh, a diff another surgery it has no immunogenic reaction and the chance of disease transmission less and with better understanding you can use the right bone graft at the right place the probable disadvantage is cost but if you look at the cost effectiveness it is not of a much of a disadvantage and it has most of the thing most of the time it has less biological activity is just an is it's just a scaffold more than anything else so if you know your bone graft and use it judiciously it is one of the best thing you can do thank you